This is the Samsung Galaxy A05 and this is Samsung's freshest addition to the A-series lineup. This little gem is not just competitively priced, it is also nicely specced for $100. I got this my unit here for 115,000 naira for 4 gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of storage. Now the million dollar question is, for this amount, is it worth the price or are there better options out there? I know you want to find out and so without taking much of your time, yo guys, let's get started. This smartphone is built out of plastic, more like a polycarbonate material and you shouldn't expect any form of water resistance for this device as this isn't rated for that. And yeah, that's right, this smartphone wouldn't be joining you for any underwater selfies. It's more of a land-loving companion. Of course, see, the design maintains the same look as the classic S23 Ultra and the siblings here and also other devices in this lineup this year. And all that this means is that you're getting a premium look even if you pay for a budget smartphone from Samsung this year. Now, the rear of the smartphone, the A05 has a glossy finish, which looks like it's got a textured pattern rear. It's just an illusion as the back feels smooth. As far as the build and the design here, I would say Samsung decided to get their devices to all have this uniform design, something that works for a lot of people, making them feel like they have the top-end devices also. But that doesn't go to say I love everything Samsung has done with the design here. For instance, I do not like the fact that you don't get a fingerprint scanner with a budget device as this. I mean, a smartphone without a biometric fingerprint scanner. I wish I placed one on the power button so we have a fingerprint scanner on this device, but it isn't here. Now, that brings me to something else I do not like with this build, and that would be the speakers on the smartphone. These are not the best I've seen for the price. Of course, at a sweet $100, you can't expect the bass to shake the room or the clarity to make your ears question reality, right? But it gets the job done and you only get a down-firing mono speaker grill here, which you can easily block off while holding this phone to game or watch your media. Now, there are things I love about the design and build here, especially the ports and the I.O. First things first, the headphone jack is alive and kicking. You get a dual SIM tray also, and that's not all. There's a dedicated micro SD card slot in the mix, so expandable memory option up to a whooping one terabyte if need be. Now, these are some of the features you wouldn't find on top-end devices like the S23 FE and S23 Ultra. Did I also mention you get a functional radio for those of you who are into that kind of stuff? So if you're tired of your same old playlist and you want to spice things up with a bit of unpredictability, just plug in your headphones and tune into your radio and let the radio waves take you on a musical roller coaster. Now you need to connect your headphones on this device to be able to activate the radio or turn it on because the connection serves as the antenna for this device. Over to the front, you get a fairly good and competitive display here. You get an LCD panel that refreshes at 60Hz with a 720p resolution and being 6.7 inch in size. So 60Hz is where they lost me on this one. But aside that, there is nothing objectively wrong with this display. I mean, the colors are popping for this price range, but when you go outside that is under direct sunlight, you begin to notice that this might not be the best or most usable in that kind of situation. And here's the thing, I wish they gave us a 90Hz refresh rate, cause the cool keys on the block are rocking 90Hz. Once you've tasted the smoothness of a higher refresh rate, you simply cannot see it, and it's that kind of upgrade that spoils you. Other than that, the bezels here are a little smaller when compared to last year's device, giving you more perceived screen real estate to enjoy, and you still get a teardrop notch that houses the front facing camera, and that brings me over to the cameras. First off, the A05 flaunts a dual camera setup at the rear, but let's be real, one camera is pulling all the weight. You get a whooping 50 megapixel main lens here and a 2 megapixel sidekick for depth sensing. Colors on this bad boy are more vibrant than a lot of devices out there, especially when you point it at things that the AI can detect. For instance, think about the skies that are blue, think about landscapes that are green, you know, those kind of things. And if you ask me, I would say Samsung currently would be in the conversation when you talk about the top 5 smartphone cameras for this price. Now, excellent looking photos from the cameras for this price, but I'm not sure I want to say same about the front facing camera. Over to the front facing camera, you get an 8 megapixel sensor, which of course does take photos, but not the best. Also, with this magenta tint to it, I'd rather assume this doesn't exist and use the rear cameras for my photos, except I'm having video calls with messaging apps. Now, for the video side of things, you can record up to 60 FPS in full HD 1080p for the rear cameras and also full HD but 30 FPS for the front facing camera. And here's what the video looks like.
On here, you get memory configurations from 4 gigs, 64 gigs, 4 gigs, 128, and 6 gigs, 128 gigs in terms of the RAM and the storage options. Now, that coupled with the Helio G85 processor from MediaTek is what informs the performance on the Galaxy A05. My unit here is the 4 gigs, 128 gigs variant, and for performance, this is quite good. In fact, I'll say this is a leap from the A04 from last year. No doubt, this handles most day to day activities pretty well. Here are some of the benchmarking app scores for the Galaxy A05 if you are into that kind of stuff, you know, the nerds. Also, if the storage isn't enough for your needs, you can expand it to a terabyte, one terabyte using the dedicated micro SD card slots on this bad boy. Now, still speaking about performance, for most light gaming and day-to-day -day tasks, this smartphone is definitely one you should consider, no doubt. I was able to play PUBG, Asphalt 9 and Call of Duty Mobile with no noticeable lags on the smartphone. PUBG of course didn't get the maximum graphics or anything close to that as can be seen here. In fact, Call of Duty did a better job with the graphics I chose and the games were playable and you'd for sure acknowledge that you're playing these mobile games on a budget device actually. Now for the software side of things, you get Android 13 out of the box with One UI Core 5.1 which is a cut down version of the main things. So you shouldn't expect to get all One UI features on this device. You should also expect about 4 years of software updates which is 3 years OS and 1 year promised security patch for the smartphone. So don't worry, Android 14 is something you'd surely get on the Galaxy A05. Now battery life on this device is amazing with the support for a 25 watt charging speed. So you'll be able to charge this device which has a 5000 milliamp hour battery from 0 to 100 in about 1 hour 30 minutes from my test actually. I pulled this battery through the paces and let me tell you something, it's a marathon runner. If you're an average user, this powerhouse can go the distance. So we're talking about a solid two days of non-stop action without tapping out. This is a phone that says, I've got the stamina, baby. I know I mentioned getting a 25 watt charging speed with this device, but out of the box, you do not get the charging brick. You only get the device, a USB-C to C cable, a quick start guide, earphones and a SIM ejector. Basically, Samsung decided to bring the bad habit from the top end devices down to the bottom. I had a feeling this day would come, but it still stings a little, you know. So this is a good phone as far as the cameras. You have a good display, quite an impressive performance, amazing battery life for $100 or 115,000 Naira for this memory configuration. But this would have been a better device if they had a charger within the box, a fingerprint scanner and a 90 hz refresh rate, or at least a combination of just two of these. Maybe a charger and a fingerprint scanner or 90 hz refresh rate and also the charger within the box. So which of these combinations would have been a better preference for you? Let me know in the comment section below and also do not forget to go check out my review on the better variant of the A05 which is the Galaxy A05s here. Koei that day.